So, uh, well, I'm coming from the University of Valencia, uh, from the Laboratory of Translational Genomics of Ruben Artero. And um, I was going to talk to you today about TPH involvement in uh, dystrophic, in myotonic dystrophy, which is an autosomic dominant disease. Uh, it's a rare disease and the main symptoms affect muscle and central nervous system. And in muscle, uh, muscle wasting and myotonia are the main symptoms. Uh, how can I? And just to show you, uh, one of the tests to measure myotonia is, uh, well, myotonia is the inability to relax muscles after contraction. So here, as you can see, uh, you should ask the patient to uh, close the hands and then you measure how long it takes to open the, the hands again. Um, it is, uh, this disease is an splithiopathy because it is uh, mainly a splicing defect, but it is not a general splicing defect. It only affects um, to a subset of transcripts which uh, do not change to the adult isoform. So then what, you, what you've got in adults are fetal isoforms which are less effective. I show you here the examples of two, the tra two of the transcripts which are, are third in myotonic dystrophy, which are the insulin receptor and also the chloride channel. And uh, the molecular basis of the disease is very simple. It is based on CDG repeats. Uh, in pathological expansions of the CDG repeats in the untranslated region of the protein DMPK. In this case, um, as the expansions are located to an untranslated uh, region, the protein DMPK, uh, it's okay, but the RNA is uh, toxic because, because it falls into a herpin, which retains some nuclear factors into a ribonuclear foci that you can see here in red and then these proteins cannot be exported to the cytoplasm and they lose their function. Um, several proteins have been found attached to the herpin, mostly transcription factors, uh, which uh, result into the uh, alteration in the transcription levels of about uh, 275 uh, different transcripts, this in the mice model. And also splicing factors are attached to the um, repeat, resulting in alteration in more than uh, one, 150 uh, different transcripts. And finally, some proteins related to RNA metabolism. We are mostly interested in muscle blind like which is MBNL1. Uh, this is the human ortholog of uh, fly muscle blind and it has been shown that it has a key role in DM1. Uh, in fact, the KO mice show uh, the same histopathology of patients, which um, uh, it's um, showing um, central nuclei and also loss of chloride channel expression, which turns into myotonia. Most, uh, moreover, it has been shown that muscle line overexpression could be therapeutic because um, muscle line expression in the um, in a, mice, in a mouse model of DM1 has been um, shown to um, rescue myotonia, also uh, histopathology, chloride channel expression, and uh, mis, uh, has been shown to repair the misplicing, uh, some misplicing events. Uh, moreover, muscle blind, although it is mainly known because of its uh, role as a splicing regulator, it has also a role in uh, microRNAs biogenesis. Um, multiple studies have shown this relationship uh, because it has been um, reported to be interacting with proteins related to microRNA biogenesis. Uh, there has also been found some microRNAs um, altered in patients, not only the levels of the microRNAs, but, but also the localization of these microRNAs, like microRNA1. And finally, uh, most recently, it has been shown that muscle line 1 was uh, directly interacting with uh, MIR1 and it could be involved in the processing of this MIR. In our laboratory, we have been working for several years uh, generating a, a fly model of DM1, expressing 480 CTG repeats in several tissues uh, using the, UAS, the GAL4 UAS system. 
And when we express the repeat um, using the myosin heavy chain promoter in the indirect flight muscles of the fly, uh, we obtain some degree of muscle degeneration uh, similar to the one who uh, you can uh, see in the patients. You you can see here these are uh, transversal sections of the thoraces uh, of uh, adult flies. And uh, as you see, the long expansions of, 40, of 480 show smaller eyes with lots of fibers. But the short expansions in the middle are, does not show this phenotype. Moreover, these flies show also misplacing defects of some transcripts like uh, troponin T. And um, we, could, uh, we reported that muscle line uh, in, uh, in concrete, the muscle line is a form C, which um, attached to the, C, the COG repeats, was collateralizing uh, with the COG repeats, so muscle line is sequestered by these uh, repeats. And um, using this model, we use these phenotypes to perform uh, different screens to look for, um, first, in the genetic screens, we were looking for other molecules which were involved in the, same, in the pathogenesis pathway of the M1. And um, we were first screening for modifiers of the CDG toxicity. We published this study uh, using a collection of P elements and we were also looking for uh, modifiers of muscle line overexpression phenotype because, as I told you, muscle line overexpression could be therapeutic. So we were looking for molecules which were involved in regulation of muscle line expression. And um, more recently, we have been uh, interested in chemical screens, just to look for molecules which were involved in the CTG toxicity pathway. And here we have found recently one molecule, which is an exapeptide called AVP1, which is able to um, decrease the number of foci shown here in, oh, sorry, shown here in red. Uh, it's able to uh, reduce the number of foci and to release muscle line from the foci, and also to um, rescue some uh, misplacing events. And we have just uh, started with this, looking for chemical modifiers of muscle line in uh, human muscle line-like expression. And we are studying here the muscle line promoter. But today I will talk to you about our screen, genetical screens using the um, interferon lines. So when we express CDG repeats under the GMR promoter in eye, we had this phenotype of rough and narrow eye, and we used this um, phenotype to perform our screen. But we also had a phenotype if we express the CDG repeats on flies, we obtained uh, these um, unextended flies in a, um, a certain portion of the um, progeny. And we obtain about 1,000 to more than 1,200 UAS RNA lines from the Japanese Nick Flystock Center and cross these uh, interferon lines with our recombinant first in the eye and when we get some modification of this phenotype um, we cross also this positive line to the um, recombinant in wing just yes, because we were interested only in those genes which were able to modify both phenotypes because they were less prone to be tissue specific. So we perform every crosses in duplicates. We were always using uh, interference of muscle line as a positive modifier of both phenotypes. And every um, positive considered, we um, uh, also crossed uh, the gene with the GAL quattro line just to ensure that the interference of the gene alone was not having any phenotype. And uh, the positive lines were validating using other, the positive genes were validated using other interferon lines like the one from, from Vienna. And here, just to show you some of the results, we obtained uh, 34 modifiers of the phenotype in eye and wing. Uh, most of them were related to uh, cytoskeletal reorganizations and also nucleic acid binding but we were mostly interested in RNA binding proteins because uh, muscle line, which is the main protein involved in DM, is an RNA binding protein. So 
these were Bicoid stability factor and TBPH, which are RNA binding proteins. And just to tell you more about this, um, these two proteins, um, BSF. BSF has a human ortholog, which is a leucine-rich PPR motif-containing protein, uh, which has a main role as a transcriptional regulation, chromosomal remodeling, and also uh, mRNA transport and stability. And the only um, data supporting its involvement in DM1 was that um, BSF and muscle blind um, attach to similar RNA structures. Um, about TBPH, you all know better than me that uh, human ortholog, it's the TDP43. And the function is, um, it has several functions related to uh, RNA metabolism, like alternative splicing, transcriptional regulation, microRNA biogenesis, transport and stability. And it is mainly known because it's a uh, role in several neurodegenerative diseases. Um, Data supporting its involvement in the M was that it could uh, attach to CGG repeats in X fragile, which is, which is has a similar mechanism to the M1, and also TDP43 has been uh, found that it can bind to muscle line one mRNA, and uh, here TDP43 it uh, it binds to uh, muscle line one, and also it regulates MEF2 splicing which is a transcription factor very important for muscle development and it has been shown that MEF2 is able to um, regulate transcription of muscle line one. Um, well, just to let you know how the uh, two proteins were regulating, were modifying RAF I morphology. Here, as you see, this is the phenotype that we got when we expressed the CDG repeats under the GMR promoter. It's a RAF and narrow I which was, um, this phenotype was enhanced by muscle brain interference and BSF interference, where you get some necrotic spots. But it was um, rescued by TBPH interference. Moreover, uh, we were trying to see if these two proteins were related in some way with muscle brain. And then we use another phenotype that we obtain when we overexpress muscle line C isoform in I. This is although a rough I, but it's a milder if you compare them with a normal I, but it is a milder phenotype. Um, when we interfere BSF, we couldn't see any modification of the phenotype, but when we interfere TBPH, this phenotype, this phenotype was uh, enhanced. So um, here it seems that there is a direct or indirect interaction with uh, muscle line and TBPH. Um, moreover, we have seen that BSF and TBPH are interacting in eye and wing, but we wanted to see if they were also expressed in muscle. So I mainly, I first talk you about muscle line expression in, in fly muscle. These are adult, uh, these are sections, longitudinal sections from adult thorax. Um, this is the, the direction of the fibers. And um, you can see here muscle blind in green and contrasting with phalloidin in red. Phalloidin is uh, always um, labeling the actin filaments. And as you, can, as you can see here, looking closer, the uh, muscle line is uh, always located to Z bands and H bands. And that's, that was very surprising because muscle blind expression has, been, has only been described in embryo and it's what it was located to nuclei um, according to its um, function as a splicing regulator. But now in adults, we only see a muscle line expression in the sarcomers, a very mild expression in nuclei. Uh, when CDG repeats are expressed, muscle line goes to um, nuclei, uh, sorry, to the foci because they are retained in, muscle line is retained into the uh, toxic RNAi, so the bands are not longer detectable. However, overexpression of human mRNL1 causes the uh, rescues, the muscle line expression in bands, uh, and also gives a high expression in the nuclei. This had been already shown in the mice, um, in mice tissues, and also in the embryo. 
But uh, here with VSF, we found a um, uh, surprising collateralization with muscle blind in the sarcomeric bands. And we saw that VSF was also mislocated from the sarcomeric bands when CDGs were expressed, and it was accumulated in the nuclei. And it was also rescued, the expression of BSF in bands, it was also rescued by uh, human MMNL1 expression. Uh, regarding TVPH, it was also um, expressed in sarcomeric bands and a very uh, mild expression in, uh, in nuclei, the same as uh, MBL, but uh, it was only detectable in H bands, which will be here. Um, however, when CDGs were expressed, we obtained like an overexpression of TVPH, and then it was detected uh, not only in H bands but also in Z bands and also um, in nuclei. Uh, in both cases, in BSF and TVPH, the expression in nuclei was not um, was not located to the foci, it was dispersed, so they were not, uh, it seems that they are not interacting directly with the CTG repeats, but they are just dispersed in the nuclei. And uh, also in the case of TVPH, we obtained um, a reduction, we obtained um, a rescue by MVNL1 expression, because now it was uh, again uh, only detectable in set bands although expression in nuclei was still higher. So we, um, we conclude that CDG repeats were able to modify BSF and TVPH expression patterns, and moreover that uh, MBNL expression was able to rescue these expression patterns. We perform molecular epistatic studies um, with these three proteins, and then we saw that uh, interference of MBNL, uh, sorry, muscle blind BSF and TVPH was able to um, uh, was enough to eliminate the expression of the proteins in the bands. Moreover, using our flies, which were interferent for muscle, which uh, had muscle blind expression interfered in muscle, we saw that removal of muscle blind was changing BSF and TVPH expression patterns because, um, and these proteins are now exactly, have now exactly the same expression patterns as they, ho as they show in the CDG expressing flies. They, uh, in the case of BSF, uh, it is not, um, is it no longer detectable in bands. And in the case of TVPH, we have an increased expression in bands and also in the nuclei. Moreover, we, um, we saw that muscle line expression is, was not altered by BSF interference or by TVPH interference. It was still uh, detectable in bands. That's suggesting that BSF and TVPH are downstream to muscle line and CUGs in the M pathogenesis pathway. Um, now that we know that TVPH is expressed in muscles, we wanted to see if it was related in some way to the muscle degeneration phenotype that we had in the uh, CDG expressing flies. As I show you before, well, these are um, indirect flight muscles, but this is a transversal section. And as you see here, CDG's expression causes small, um, smaller muscles because there is a uh, loss of fibers. And when you interfere BSF in the CDG expressing flies, we obtain a very similar muscle to the um, one expressing only CDGs. Here we quantified and we obtained uh, no significant differences. But uh, interfering TBPH, we obtained uh, larger muscles. Um, here uh, we obtained about a 15% of recovery of the muscle mean uh, size. And so TBPH rescues uh, muscle degeneration phenotype. And this is very interesting because um, muscle wasting and muscle degeneration is one of the main symptoms of the patients, which has not been explained before. Well, these flies, uh, these flies cannot fly. They've got uh, the upper uh, wings. And here we, we cannot rescue flight. 
So still, if it, it is improved, the muscle size, but they still cannot fly. Uh, what we did was also uh, look at the interferent flies. Um, we look at the um, BSF and TBPH interferent and also the dilation flies. And these uh, muscles were also normal. So these two proteins um, are not involved in muscle development by itself. Neither TBPH nor BSF interference do affect the muscle morphology. Well, this, uh, I show you that TBPH is, is expressed in uh, muscle sarcomers, H bands. And the CDG expression and also muscle band interference can induce the TBPH increase in muscle and sarcomeric bands. And the human MVNL1 simultaneous expression with CDGs rescues um, TBPH expression patterns. And about phenotypes, uh, I show you that TBPH interference rescues um, CDGs induced phenotypes in eye, wing, muscle, and also it can enhance uh, muscle binary expression uh, phenotype in eye. Um, but we, were, uh, we knew that there was some uh, change in the pattern of TBPH, but we wanted to know exactly what uh, functions of TBPH uh, were altered by CDGs expression. And we just, uh, this is something very preliminary, but we have just started looking at microRNA biogenesis just because one person in the lab, um, Juan Manuel Fernandez, was uh, already describing the fly model Mirnom. And he found that um, flies expressing CDG repeats in muscle were uh, half. Uh, all these microRNAs altered, or all of them were uh, downregulated and one was upregulated. And mostly he found that uh, MIR1, 7, and MIR10, which are highly conserved in humans, are downregulated in DM1. Uh, he has validated this, um, the downregulation of MIR1 using our model flies and also using human um, tissue from, from patients. And um, MIR ones, uh, just to tell you more about the function of this MIR, uh, it's very important for muscle development. It, it can um, poten potentiate uh, myoblast differentiations to MEF2. And uh, we can feed muscle blind um, in this uh, pathway because uh, muscle blind one uh, bends uh, to premier one and um, induces MIR1 uh, synthesis, and also because MEF2 can um, induce muscle gland 1 transcription. This has been shown in mice models, but we want, and also that uh, when muscle gland 1 is attached to the hairpin, then the synthesis of MIR1 is interfered. So we have test uh, MIR1, if MIR1 is reduced in our um, DM flies and the human muscles, and if this reduction is caused by muscle blind. And here I show you how uh, muscle blind interference can reduce levels of MIR1. So, um, MIR1, uh, so muscle blind uh, should be involved in the synthesis of this microRNA. And also when we overexpress muscle blind C isoform in a background of uh, flies expressing CDGs, we obtain a recovery of the MIR1 expression, which is downregulated in the CTGs uh, expressing muscles. Um, then we look if um, we wanted to know if TBPH was also involved in some way with muscle blind in this uh, in the regulate in the expression of this MIR1, because we have seen that muscle blind and TBPH were um, there was some interaction between them, and. We confirm that uh, nor the TBPH interference nor the uh, heterozygotes dilations were, uh, had any um, effect on MIR1 levels. So TBPH seems to be not related to the biogenesis of this MIR. However, um, when we interfere TBPH in flies expressing CDGs in muscle, we obtain a decreased expression of MIR1 which was already uh, downregulated in these flies. So um, it seems that in this case, muscle uh, TBPH interference downregulates MIR1 expression in the CTG expression flies. 
So in some way, TBPH must be contributing to maybe not biogenesis, uh, but uh, to the regulation of this mirror in the CDG express implies maybe uh, civilization, we still don't know. And the future perspective, we've got a lot of things to do to show that TDP43 is involved in DM1. But uh, first, we would like to confirm some of our results in flies in the human patient because we've got uh, muscles from DM1 patients and we would like to see if TDP43 is also changing, um, if the expression pattern of this protein is also altered in the muscles or if this patient have any sign of uh, aggregation in some regions of the central nervous system because the patients of, uh, it's a very mild symptom but most of the patients show some symptoms related to the frontotemporal dementia. So we, we want to look at this. And then to confirm uh, if TDP43 can bind directly uh, MIR1 and also test other roles of TBPH um, which can be altered in our fly model, like for example, uh, splicing regulation. And finally, um, just if everything works nicely here, we would like to uh, enter into develop a screening system for chemical modifiers because as I told you, we have been performing a lot of screenings and we have set up the platform for um, mostly for chemical modifiers of toxicity. And uh, we would like to try uh, to find modifiers of um, toxicity, not, on, not only in DM1, but also maybe in other diseases. And just to show you who we are, this is uh, my boss, Ruben Artero, and uh, Amelia, um, Ariana, bueno, Amelia Benito and Ariana Vargiera have been working in the screening with me and performing also the Northerns and Immunos. And this is Juan Manuel Fernandez, who, who is already finishing his PhD and he has done all the work with the microRNAs. And that's all, thank you very much. Questions?